Hi, my name is Brian Dick, and this is my new series on solving hacker rank challenges. So I am going to be going through all of the interview preparation kit, uh, and I am starting with the warm up challenges. I will be solving these problems in C++ because that is my favorite language of choice. Uh, however, the same concepts and principles should be easily converted to any programming language. All right. So with that out of the way, let's get into this problem. This is the sales by match problem. It is the first problem of the warm up challenges. And the problem is as follows. Alex works at a clothing store. There's a large pile of socks that must be paired by color for sale. Given an array of integers representing the number of each sock, determine how many pairs of socks with matching colors there are. For example, there are n equals seven socks and with colors r, uh, which is equal to one, two, one, two, one, three, two, there is one pair of color one and one of color two. There are three odd socks left, one of each color. The number of pairs is two. So for our function description, we are supposed to write a function that uh, is called sock merchant in the editor below. It's going to return the integer representing the number of matching pairs that are available. And we're going to be given the number of socks in the pile and an array of the colors of each sock. And then it gives us our input format and our constraints and our output format. So our output format is going to just simply be an integer, which is the total number of matching pairs of socks. Uh, as far as the input and the constraints, we don't really care about that because uh, this problem is too simple where these constraints do not really get us any special advantage, uh, as far as I can think of, uh, as far as I know at least. And um, the input format, they handle all of the input code for us. We are just writing a single function. So here is the sample input. The sample input takes in nine, uh, and then this sequence of numbers where it goes 10, 20, 20, 10, 10, 30, 50, 10, 20. And uh, if we're thinking about the problem here, uh, if we were to solve this just in real life, if we were presented this problem at a retail job, we would go through and organize all of these socks by their color. So we'd take all of our uh, white socks, which would be, we call those tens. Those would be in one pile. We'd have our black socks in uh, another pile. We'll call that 20. And then we'll have like, let's say green and yellow for 30 and 50. Uh, just something to give it. And we would then, once we have them in piles, we'd start making pairs. And then we would have whatever's left over after that. We'd be able to count the number of pairs. So, uh, a good way of solving that programmically uh, would be we could go through this array and we could say, OK, well, I have a 10. So let me create a dictionary. And my key is going to be 10. And the value that that key points to will equal uh, the current number of that color I have, uh, for example. That would be like the most natural one-to-one -one ratio. So then we would have a dictionary. We would then have our first number. This is a key that doesn't exist. So we create a new key, 10. We set that value equal to one and keep going, 20. That's a new value, so it's a key. We would set that value to one. Then we have 20 again. That's a value we already have. So we can set that value to 20 and so on and so forth. By the time we get to the end, we then just go through our dictionary, uh, check the value held by each key, and then that would and then divide those values by two, and then give us the total number of pairs. That will work out. However, that's horribly inefficient uh, in both time and space complexity because we're going to be going uh, through the uh, uh, through it twice, uh, and then we're also going to need. Uh, we're, so we'll be going through the array twice. So that's two n, and we'd also be needing the. Uh, a lot more space to use a dictionary. It'd be about n squared space, I believe. Um, so that's not the most efficient solution. A more efficient solution would be to sort this array. And then after sorting the array, uh, just simply count up how many we have before there's a change in value. So we'd have all of our 10s next to each other, all of our 20s next to each other, and then our 30, 50 at the end. And what that will allow us to do is we could then just see how many 10s we have in a row. And as soon as it switches, we add the number of pairs we have from of 10s. And then we go through our 20s. Once we get to the end of the 20s, we add the number of 20 pairs we had. And then we go in the 30s and 50s and so on. And that's very scalable. That's an n, uh, a simply an n problem. 
and uh, we are only going to use n space as well. So our, our space complexity is better and has improved by entire magnitude. Uh, however, our time efficiency is probably about the same, but it is much more space efficient and a lot easier to implement. So let's go down to our function here. Uh, I'll go ahead and make this bigger. Um, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so if we were to implement it like that, before we do anything else, we'll want to do a sort. Uh, oh, we have to do this, so we'll just do sort. Uh, sort takes in two parameters and uh, a pointer to, or an iterator to the beginning. So we can get that from vector just by doing uh, the name dot begin and an iterator to the end. And if you don't know what an iterator is, Google it. No, uh, Google it for a better explanation. But basically, it's an pointer to that location in memory so that uh, it knows how big of a step to take in memory to get from the start of the first value to the start of the next value. Uh, and then it also knows this is just giving you the space in physical memory where to look for these values. Uh, and that helps things be a little bit more efficient than other languages, for example. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just sort this first. We don't really need to think about the depth of how the sort function works in C, uh, slash loop plus plus, but it, it, we just know it works in this case. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and start setting some values. So first, we're going to have an int value, and we're going to keep track of the number of pairs found. So currently, we have no pairs because we haven't looked for any yet. So I think that's pretty fair to say. Uh, we also want to keep track of the current color we're looking at. So we're going to call that cur num because in this case, we are looking at numbers. And in our current num in this case is going to be the very first element of this vector. So this is the current color uh, we are looking for. So, uh, so there's that. And then we're going to want one more integer. This is going to be our cur run. So what current run represents is uh, this is the number of the current num we have found. Oh gosh, you can't type from my life. Okay, so this is basically when we go through, we have one, 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 two, 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 and then a three. This is keeping track of how many numbers there are before we hit that end. So now let's iterate through our vector. And I think in this case, it's very fitting to just use a for each loop. So we'll say int num in R. Um, so what this is, if you haven't used a for each loop in C++ before, Basically, what's happening is it's, it's going to be setting each number of the array, going to go from the beginning to the end in order, uh, which is important since we have sorted this. Uh, it is going to be grabbing the num current number at that place, and it's going to store that in num for the duration of this loop. And that's very important in this case because that's the number we're interested in. Sorry, I had to get a little bit of water. Okay. So since we have this number now, we're going to go ahead and see if this number, uh, num, is equal to our current number. So we're going to see if this is the same color that we're looking for. If it is, we're going to say current run uh, plus, uh, plus plus per run. And this is just an increment. So we're basically adding one to this current run. And if we do not have the same number, this is where things become interesting. Uh, so whenever we get to the end of the current run, um, new color uh, current run is over, new run begins. So here, what we're wanting to do is see how many number of pairs were in that previous run uh, or the current run. So num pairs is going to be plus incremented by the current run divided by 2. 
this is possible because of integer division. Uh, it just ignores the remainder. So if we have three ones in our previous one, we go through here three times. And then on the fourth time, when this value is now a two, it'll go to our else statement. And then it is going to say, OK, well, our current run was three. We're going to divide that by two, which gives us one. And that is going to be added to our number of pairs. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to trash this current run and set this equal to zero. That's because we have already seen the first value for this run. We have our one color, this color. And so this new run is going to be equal to one. We are then going to set our current num, or color, equal to the num we just found. Uh, and this is just setting up the current number to what it is. So now we're going to go, that's everything we need to do in this for loop. And then we're going to go right outside this for loop. Uh, now, let's think of the case where we have one, two, uh, one, 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 two, three, three, three. So in this case here, since this, the, the last three numbers are all the same and have one pair in it, this will give us the wrong number as this currently stands. Our number of pairs is not accounting for this final pair because we never go into this else statement with that final run. So what we want to do is before we return any values, we want to account for that final run. So we are going to say uh, num pairs plus equals the current run divided by two, just like we did above. And then now we're finally allowed to return the num pairs, and that should uh, should be it. So let's go ahead and run our code, and it's processing. Okay, cool. So we'll pass all of the test cases. Um, which are just the sample test cases. So we can go ahead and submit this. And bam, we have solved this challenge. All right, so I think that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you liked this video and it helped you out, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content because I do plan on going through the entire interview preparation kit uh, if you have any suggestions, like wanting me to go and do this in different languages or uh, maybe do different types of problems other than just the interview preparation kit, uh, go ahead and leave those below. And if you also have any uh, specific tutorials that you're interested in learning about, uh, please drop that below as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and until next time.